So welcome back to module four, which is the need for psychological science. This is a short module with actually only one learning target, but it is a critical module for our understanding of the field of psychological science. And it lays the groundwork for everything we are talking about in this course. So people turn to psychology in many ways and for many different reasons. The key thought is to be able to distinguish fact from opinion. We all have a lot of opinions, and sometimes it's really hard to distinguish our own opinions and other people's opinions from actual fact. So many people and even world leaders believe in their instincts, their guts, they go by their gut feelings. And you know what? They're often wrong. Our gut feelings can be helpful, but they can often be really wrong and lead us in the wrong direction. People often repeatedly overestimate their ability to use their gut feelings. So what is the, the learning target for this module? Well, it is how do hindsight bias, overconfidence, and the tendency to perceive order in random events illustrate why science-based answers are more valid than those based on common sense? So these are the ideas we want to be thinking about as we move through this module, this concept of hindsight bias, overconfidence, and our tendency to want to see order. We want to make order out of this world. So let's start off with a little bit of a try it. <laughs> True or false, vitamin C prevents the common cold. We only use 10% of our brain. The more we are around someone, the more they get on our nerves. So why do we need science-based answers? Did you answer true to those common sense statements? Okay, they're not. Repetition of statements makes them easier to remember and more true seeming. So hearing things over and over and over again makes it seem like there's more truth to them, to us as human beings. Research using valid scientific studies helps us overturn popular ideas. Things that we think are common sense often really aren't based in any sort of scientific research. Just because we've heard something many times doesn't mean that it's true. That's really important as we move through this course. Just because you've heard something over and over again told by many different people does not mean it's true. I like to say the statement, you know, the plural of anecdote doesn't, isn't fact. Right? Just because you've heard an anecdote over and over and over again, even by several different people, doesn't mean that it's true. Okay? We need to use, we need evidence to uh, believe that there's truth in the statement. So what are some of the roadblocks to our critical thinking? What are the, some, some of the things that interfere with us being able to see sort of what the truth is in the world? These three things, hindsight bias, overconfidence, and perceiving patterns in random events. Hindsight bias. What is that? Well, a famous philosopher Kierkegaard said, life is lived forwards, but understood backwards. How true is that, right? We have to be moving forward as we're living, but to understand sort of what has happened in life, we need to look backwards. And here's a picture of the, a terrible oil spill that happened in 2010. And it was easy to look back and say, oh my goodness, how did that happen? We should have done this, this, and this. But as they, you know, the people involved in it were living life, they hadn't foreseen those things happening. So what specifically is hindsight bias? It's the tendency to believe after learning an outcome that we would have foreseen it. So BP employees took shortcuts and ignored warning signs without intending to harm the environment or the company's reputation. After the Gulf oil spill with the benefit of 2020 hindsight, the foolishness of those judgments became obvious. So it's sort of the idea of Saturday morning quarterbacking. Did we know it all along? People often have this hindsight bias. They look back and it makes an event seem like it was inevitable. Of course that would have happened. I would have known it all along. Um, after something happens, it's just our tendency to think that it seems so obvious. You might even be able to think right now about some times where this has happened to you, where you're like, I can't believe those people did that. How did they not foresee that happening? So people ha can have common sense um, also, people can have common sense in opposite directions. We're going to talk about that in a second. Psychological studies will often oppose common sense, and our body determines much about what we do and feel. So let's go back to the idea of hindsight bias, though. What, 
what are some examples of hindsight bias? Well, this we knew it all along phenomenon. After a couple of breaks up, as a friend, you might say, or hear a friend say, they were never a good match, right? Um, we can look back and say, oh gosh, how are they ever together? Of course we knew they were gonna break up. It's easy to look back after the fact. So think critically for a moment. Why didn't someone tell the couple they were a poor match while they were dating? Were they really a poor match? What would we say if the couple went on to marry? Now they're the perfect couple. Um, we have to think about our own thinking and how we look at different events. And we perceive that we would have known, we understand things in a different way than everyone else does. Um, so what's another example of hindsight bias? So the football. Saturday morning quarterbacking. After we lose the Friday night football game, fans say something like, that stupid move by the coach lost us the championship. Now, of course, you also have the opposite effect. After we win the Friday night football game, fans may say, that gutsy move by the coach was such a great call. And I've seen this so many times over and over again. And of course, it doesn't just apply to football. Um, it applies to many different sports. So let's look at some of the research on hindsight bias. So separation weakens romantic attraction is something that you hear people say. Um, out of sight, out of mind. When presented with the statement above, most find this true statement unsurprising. But also we hear the statement, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Separation strengthens romantic attraction. When presented with the statement above, most find this true statement unsurprising. So we hear these statements over and over again that are conflicting ideas. And we sort of take them into our brain and keep them there and use them when they apply. And so we're like, of course, um, they were apart and now they're back together and they're so happy because absent makes the heart grow fonder. On the other side, if we find out that a couple breaks up after being separated, we might say something like out of sight, out of mind. Of course, they moved on, they weren't together. And we sort of convince ourselves that we knew all along that those things would happen. So let's have a little bit of an answer check here, um, just to check your comprehension to make sure you're following along. Um, after the student council election, a friend tells you he could have guessed who would be elected president. What psychological phenomena might this illustrate? And yes, it would be C, what we're talking about, hindsight bias. Okay. This next slide, I want you to, to look at these um, jumbled letters. I'm going to give you a, a minute or so to start the timer and see how long it takes you to unscramble these anagrams. And then write down your times and we'll come back to this later. Okay, don't worry if you didn't get them done. Um, we're gonna come back to them later. So what is the concept of overconfidence? The tendency to think we know more than we do. <laughs> a lot of us can have this at different times. Some of us can have the opposite problem sometimes too, but we as humans often have a tendency to believe that we know more than we do. People are often overconfident. Overconfidence occurs when we are more confident that we know something than we are correct. An example um, would be maybe those jumbled words. <laughs> We're gonna get to that. Um, so let's look at some of the research on overconfidence. Solution time without answers given. Solution time with answers given. So the average problem solver um, spends about three minutes to solve those anagrams. Right, but the estimate they thought they would take would be about 10 seconds. How long did it take you? Did you even finish them in that short amount of time I gave you? <laughs> um, do your times match up with the researchers found? What do you think subject, why do you think we estimate that it'll take us much less time? What is it, what is it, why do we have this overconfidence if we look at something um, 
do we think that we'll be able to solve it more quickly than we end up being able to solve it? And just so you know, the answers were water, entry, and, bar and barge, okay? So those were not easy words, especially barge, and it definitely took me longer than 10 seconds to solve them when I first saw it. But it's just a good way to illustrate what we think that it'll only take us a certain amount of time, but it ends up taking us a lot longer. So what are some other examples of overconfidence? So a British expert group evaluating the invention of the telephone. So someone apparently said, the telephone may be appropriate for American cousins, but not here because we have an adequate supply of messenger boys. Or in 1949, in the popular mechanics magazine, someone said, computers in the future may weigh, may weigh no more than 1.5 tons. Well, thank goodness that wasn't true. <laughs> and their overconfidence was wrong. What are some other interesting examples? Um, I think there's another one that's really, really uh, famous that I've heard about many times throughout my life is that someone from a record company in 1962 turned down this famous group called the Beatles saying, we don't like their sound. Groups of guitars are on their way out. Well, they were very wrong and their overconfidence probably cost them a lot of money. So let's look at some more information on overconfidence. Okay, so percent confidence. 80%, the degree of confidence expert, expressed by experts regarding 27,000 outcomes in world events. Well, how often were these experts correct in these outcomes in world, event, world events? Only about 40% of the time were the predictions right. So you can see there's a big problem with overconfidence. So a little learning check again. The tendency to exaggerate the correctness or accuracy of our beliefs and predictions is called overconfidence, <laughs> B. Okay, so let's try this. Let's think about this. If you flip a coin six times, which of the following sequences of heads, H and tails, T, is most likely? So now write down your response and let's see what science has to say about it. So let's look at this research on perceived order and random events. Most people, when given that question on the, that was on the last slide, believe that HTT, HTH, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, he heads is most likely. Actually, all three are equally likely or equally unlikely. Random sequences often don't look random. So um, you're likely to get each of those three options as often as the other ones. So fraud experts can detect embezzlers who are trying to make their withdrawals look random, right? Like that's really, really interesting. People trying to make things look random um, are, are, are pretty detectable. With a large enough sample, any outrageous thing is likely to happen. And that's another thing you can really, rem really have to think about with like the heads versus tails and probability that over time and with enough um, with big samples, really strange patterns can seem to appear within data that are really just um, expressions of randomness, but they look like patterns. And as humans, we try to find pa patterns within the data always. We are always looking to find, find order in random events. Um, <laughs> funny little meme here. Bizarre sequence of computer-generated random numbers. And they all ended up coming out in order. That could happen, right? And uh, even though it's supposed to be random, doesn't mean it needs to be out of order. Random means it could end up being in order sometimes. It's unlikely, unless you have a really, really large sample of something you're looking at, but it could happen. So in our natural eagerness to make sense of an unpredictable world, we are prone to perceive patterns in, in random events. So here's another learning check. A local basketball team has won three championships in a row and is on a winning streak going into the final game. Explain how their fans might use the following to explain a loss in the final game. So we could think about these a little bit. Like hindsight bias, if they lose, it could be likely that they say something like, oh, their streak is over. I knew it was over. Their coach made a bad decision. It's easy. I could have, I could have predicted that would happen. Um, Thinking about overconfidence is a little bit of a different way to look at it. We could have just said, oh.
So overconfidence is just really when we are more confident that we know something than we are, than we are correct about. And so overconfidence would be saying, oh, I knew that was, you know, I, that, I knew that was going to happen. So the overconfidence would just be that we're more confident about the fact that they were going to be um, lose that next game, that we kind of saw it how, that it was going to happen. And the last one, the tendency to perceive order in random events would be that we saw that they won three championships in a row. There's no way they could win four in a row. We would have a tendency to think that's not a possibility, even though it is. It's, it's, le- it's as likely as losing. But that would be our, we want to see um, these patterns where it would be like, not possible to have all wins for a really long period of time. So we would think that it was obvious that they're going to lose because they've had so many wins and it's time for that to change. So to just review this very short module and the one learning target, how to hindsight bias, overconfidence, and the tendency to perceive order and random events, illustrate why science-based answers are more valid than those based on common sense. Well, hindsight bias, overconfidence, and our eagerness to perceive patterns in random events lead us to overestimate the weight of common sense thinking. Scientific inquiry, we're going to talk about that in the next few modules, can really help us overcome these biases and shortcomings. So thank you for listening. Next up will be module 4.4-2. Take care.